Welcome to the crux. In this video, we're going to discuss the prokaryotic transcription by focusing on the first step of the transcription, which is initiation. In our previous video, we discussed that the promoter is a piece of DNA upstream of the coding region that binds RNA polymerase along with some transcription factors to initiate transcription. A brief recap of prokaryotic promoter is that there are three key elements to remember, which are the UPE minus 35 and the minus 10 element. On top of this, you sometimes see extended negative 10 and the discriminator element. If you don't know what these are, check out the prokaryotic promoter video. The link is in the description as well as in the cards on the top right corner. And we also said that the RNA polymerase binds to UPE, whereas sigma factors bind to the remaining elements. Since there are different types of sigma factors, in this video we will restrict our discussion to sigma 70, also known as sigma D or RPOD. The 70 here refers to the molecular weight of this particular sigma factor in kilodaltons. Now, before we dive into initiation, let's get a quick introductory look at the polymerase and the sigma factor. So sigma factor is an initiator or initiation factor that has the ability to recognize promoters. And RNA polymerase is the enzyme responsible for synthesizing the RNA. If we look at the structure of the sigma factor, we see that it is made up of four DNA binding domains, simply named from one, two, three, and four. And these domains are joined by flexible linkers. The C terminus of the protein is at the end of the fourth domain, and the beginning or N terminus is at the first domain. Now, interestingly, in its free state, sigma factor cannot bind the promoter DNA. And that is because the four DNA binding domains are locked by the N terminus region. Because these DNA binding domains cannot function, the sigma factor is therefore inactive in its free state. Now, looking at the RNA polymerase, we see that it is made up of two alpha subunits, a beta and a beta prime subunit, and one omega subunit. The alpha subunits are involved in the promoter recognition, which we will see in a moment. The beta and the beta prime together give rise to the catalytic activity of the enzyme, whereas the omega helps in the polymerase folding, assembly, and some regulation. In its free state, the RNA polymerase is known as the core enzyme, and if we had to draw out the polymerase in cartoon form, it would look something like this, where you have two beta subunits with an omega unit in the middle and the alpha units with its N-terminal domain attached to the beta units, whereas the C-terminus domains will hang outwards with the help of the flexible linker. Now, keep in mind that the free state RNA polymerase is blind, which means that it will bind anywhere on the DNA. But for meaningful transcription, it needs to specifically bind to the promoter. So if both sigma factor and polymerase are indifferent towards promoters, how is then the promoter recognized? The sigma factor actually has affinity for the RNA polymerase. So if we look at the complex that is formed by these two together, we see that sigma factor binds to the beta subunits of the RNA polymerase. And in this complex, the N-terminus that was blocking the DNA binding domains in the free state of the sigma factor actually moves about 20 or so angstroms away. And the DNA binding domains are now exposed and ready to bind the promoter DNA. Importantly, this complex of sigma factor and RNA polymerase core enzyme is called holoenzyme, which is the catalytically active form of the enzyme RNA polymerase. And notice that the DNA binding domains of sigma factors are not embedded within the enzyme, but are exposed to the outside in this hollow enzyme. Now, this complex can bind to the promoter. Specifically, domain 4 binds to the negative 35 element, domain 3 to the extended negative 10, domain 2 to the negative 10, and if available, domain 1 binds to the discriminator element and the two alpha C terminus region bind the UPE element. So the key players that we will discuss in the initiation of transcription are the promoter DNA, sigma factor, and the core RNA polymerase, where the latter two give rise to the holo enzyme. 
Okay, so now that we understand these basics, let's take a comprehensive look into the process of initiation. So the first step in prokaryotic transcription initiation is the formation of a closed complex. This complex is formed when the hollow enzyme that we discussed a few moments ago makes contact with the promoter DNA. In this complex, the hollow enzyme aligns itself to the promoter DNA such that specific contact between UPE and alpha CTD, negative 35 in domain 4, and negative 10 element in domain 2 of sigma factor are made. This cartoon here depicts the side view representation of the hollow enzyme. As an analogy, think of this view of the hollow enzyme as the side view of a baseball glove holding the ball where the glove is the core enzyme and the front and the back portion of the glove is split among the beta subunits. And the ball here represents the sigma factor that makes contact with the promoter DNA. For simplicity, we will ignore the UPE and alpha CTD domains. To see this closed complex in detail, we will now focus on the main part of the hollow enzyme by rotating the cartoon 90 degrees along the x-axis, just like you would rotate a kebab on a grill. This gives us the bottom view. The sigma domains here are positioned at specific locations, and each domain is joined by the linker proteins. The green space here represents the catalytic activity center of the enzyme. In this complex, the activity center is blocked by the domain 1 of sigma factor, and likewise the RNA exit channel of the enzyme is blocked by the flexible linkers that connect sigma 3 and sigma 4 domains. Looking at the bound DNA in this conformation, we see that the negative 35 element is contacted by domain 4, and the negative 10 element is contacted by domain 2. To understand this rotation better, here's the analogy with the baseball glove. If we look at the features of the closed complex, we see that it spans from negative 55 position, where the UPE is present, to around the plus 1 site, which is the transcription start site, or TSS. This conformation is usually irreversible, meaning that at this stage, if the energetics are not favorable, the enzyme can easily disassemble. But if the energetics are favorable, then the closed complex transforms into an open complex, which is the second stage of initiation. In this stage, we see that the domain 1 of sigma factors moves out of the activity center by about 50 angstroms, thereby unblocking it. Another important transition that happens in this stage is the conformational change, also known as the isomerization of the sigma factor. As a consequence of this isomerization, the domain 2 unwinds or melts the double-stranded DNA at the negative 10 element. The melting occurs in a span of 13 bases, from position negative 12 to about plus 2. So the melting process actually includes the TSS. Notice the dotted representation of DNA strand. This means that the strand is actually behind the domain 2. This 13 base pairs of melted DNA is usually known as the transcription bubble. Let's look at this transcription bubble in more detail. So our focus here is now on the domain 2 of the sigma factor and the 13 base pairs of DNA under it. If you recall our discussion on the promoter structure, the consensus for negative 10 element is TATAAT. In this transcription bubble, the adenine at position negative 11 and the thiamine at position negative 7 are flipped into the domain 2. This flipping mechanism is initiated by alpha helixes in domain 2, and specifically the aromatic amino acid like tyrosine and tryptophan are involved in this. So this 13 base pairs melt and the sigma factor, domain 2 specific contact, causes a conformational change in the hollow enzyme. And unlike what we saw in the closed complex, this is irreversible. After the formation of transcription bubble and DNA melting, the open complex transitions into the ternary complex. In the open complex, the conformation is still slightly unstable because the plus 1 and plus 2 sites are unbound. So to transition to a more stable state, 
the activity now focuses on the plus one and the plus two site. And the enzyme brings in the first couple of NTPs and makes the first couple of bases of the RNA. So this short processing of couple of bases stabilizes the enzyme. And it is at this stage that the open complex transitions into the ternary complex, which is simply a complex formed by the DNA, hollow enzyme, and the RNA. Now, the enzyme attempts to transcribe beyond plus two site. This initial attempt is performed by the process known as DNA squinching. In the complex here, the plus one is at the edge of the bubble, but in DNA squinching, the template is pulled into the hollow enzyme such that the plus one moves inwards. In this process, the hollow enzyme synthesizes short RNAs, and then sometimes it fails to move forward. So it restarts the entire process at the transcription bubble in an open complex. These short RNAs are usually about 9 to 10 nucleotides, but sometimes they can also be as long as 20 nucleotides. So this process of releasing short abortive RNAs as a result of failure to proceed is called the abortive transcription. More commonly, however, if the enzyme makes an RNA longer than 10 nucleotides, it successfully proceeds to the next phase, which is the elongation phase. And that is the second step of the transcription process. Now, following the escape of enzyme from the promoter DNA, the sigma factor usually is released from the hollow enzyme. But some recent single molecule imaging studies have revealed that sigma factor can remain associated even in the elongation phase. So that's the crux of prokaryotic transcription initiation. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and a comment along with your questions or suggestions that you may have and share this video with your friends. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more knowledge. See you in the next video.